Hello, my name is Pat Bowes, and I will be the host today to Welcome to SCAN. Our guest today is Dr. Maureen Murphy, President of Brookdale Community College, and um, I am really pleased to have you with us. I know that you've been w at the college since 2012. It probably seems much longer than that in some respects. <laughs> um, and I do know that you have some ties in regards to the community here in Monmouth County. So why don't you tell us how you, the road it took you to come back. Well, it, thank you, Pat. I'm delighted to be here. And you're right. I do have ties to Monmouth County. My, uh, my, my father was raised in Atlantic Islands. He was born in Port Monmouth. And he met my mother while she was attending Monmouth Junior College when it was in the Asbury Park High School. Oh. So that, uh, that goes back quite a ways. Um, and now it's Monmouth University and it's absolutely huge and beautiful. <laughs> so who knew? But they, they did, they, they got married and, and even though the shore claims me, uh, the reality is I left New Jersey when I was about three. So it's, it's been a long road coming back. We spent every summer here though because we had all of our family back here in New Jersey. So it's kind of crazy that this is where, where I've landed. Um, I grew up in the Midwest. My, my folks moved to the Midwest. I, I graduated from high school in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Wow. And uh, after that, just kind of moved around, got my education in, in Kentucky and in Missouri. And my husband and I lived in Missouri for over 20 years. That's where we raised our family. And I, was, I started out teaching at a community college, thought I'd retire as a teacher there. Um, I absolutely loved it. I taught English, loved the students, and sort of through the back door, I became an administrator. They needed somebody to fill in for a semester as a dean, and now here I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it always works. It, it is. You know? So it, most recently, we, we moved here from Houston, Texas, where I was president of San Jacinto College South in Houston. and. When the opportunity came, I was nominated for the position to come to Brookdale. I, I took a good look at it. I thought, this is pretty cool. Great. So here I am, back in the shore. And we're happy to have you. Thank you. Um, I, I, I know throughout your career that you have um, distinguished yourself through developing educational partnerships. And I'm excited about that because SCAN has always been a partner with Brookdale. And we'll talk about that a little more. And hopefully we'll do some more things in the future um, and diverse things versus what we might have done in the past. Um, you are a, a champion for educational innovation. I mean, these are all of the things that we need right now. And, and the system is... Um, going in that direction and I'm really pleased to see that. Um, that you have deep experience in overseeing accreditation, strategic planning, implementing master plans, developing grants, show me the money, <laughs> and most importantly helping people develop to reach their full potential and I think that that just says volumes in regards to who you are and that you're now with us and so we're really privileged to have you with us. Um, so I would love to talk a little more about Brookdale. I, I oh. think that I want to know more than I do. I want to understand the direction it's going in and, um, and what you would love to share with the audience and the community so that we can help you get there. Well, thank you. I, you're asking me to talk about my absolute favorite thing, which is Brookdale. And it's, I think we have to, um, I think most people are familiar with Brookdale because a lot of folks have sent their sons and daughters to us so that they can take courses and transfer on to someplace else. But we do so much more. Okay, great. Happy to have them keep them coming. Yes. You know, that is our bread and butter. Our bread and butter is uh, lower division undergraduate education, and we do a very good job. But we have six locations through the county. Wow. We have, everybody knows the one in Lincroft. It's our largest one. We have a full campus in Freehold. So on, on Route 9, behind the Bank of America, you keep, I, I have a hard time getting in and out. It's not the easiest place to maneuver, but it, it does, we offer full degrees there. And we have higher education centers in Hazlitt, in Long Branch, in Neptune, and in Wall. Wow. So we're every place. It's, our middle name is community, so we're all over the community. We also offer degrees and certificates that lead directly to the workforce, and um, those are both credit, and we, do, we have a large non-credit continuing education divi division that does contract training, workforce development, short-term certifications, and 
of, of course, we're known for our leisure learning and, and some of those programs as well. So it's a comprehensive community college, and we touch probably about 30,000 people a year. Wow. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. It's... Uh, we, our credit head count this fall was around 14,000, and we've got easily that many in non-credit. And let's not forget our summer camps. Let's not. It's, we're, I think we're, I just saw the catalog. Oh, I know. It, it, it's, I, it makes you want to be a kid again. There's so many things to do, and, and we will be just filled with young people all summer. It's great. Yes. So with all of that wonderful stuff in the six locations, I didn't know that you had six. That's really in mm -hmm. impressive. So what are some of the challenges you faced in regards to coming into the position, and, um, and how's it going? Well, it, it, the weekend before I started was when the water broke in Main Broken Swimming River Road. And so the first thing I got to deal with was no water on campus. And that sort of <laughs> That all set the stage. It, it, it did. It did. The very first conference call I had with folks was about what we do with this, with this water outage at Lincroft and all those summer camps. So we, we, it was jumping right in. And, uh, you know, it wasn't too long until we had Superstorm Sandy. And we know everybody is still dealing with the aftermath of that. But it, it's... Uh, it's a heck of a way to build a team, but it really did work. Everybody came together, and Brookdale was very lucky, and we were able to get up and running pretty quickly. So those have been our huge challenges, or are, are just ones that who knew they were coming. And you know, other challenge that we have, of course, is like all other um, community colleges, and that's funding. Mm -hmm. And our we are so fortunate to be in Monmouth County. The county is a very good partner with the college, and and has not and has held our funding flat even though I know that that's a choice that they had to make in their budget and we're we're very grateful for that but state funding of course has gone down significantly yes. and, and we're trying our best to find new ways to make ends meet well join the club I know <laughs> we'll join your club <laughs> uh, in regards to doing that um, just want to spend a couple more minutes on Sandy because I do know that it, it's it, it ha was and still is and will be for a long time affecting the communities at large. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I did notice, and uh, again, this seems to happen, is that with all of this stuff happening, it brought the community together. It and it has provided the opportunities for people to talk to each other that never did before, mm -hmm. that agencies now sit at the same table and share what they do and how they do it. So the issue of duplication of services um, are out there so we don't have to do that. and We can identify our strengths and run with it. And that the funding community um, externally um, has been very generous and has um, their guidelines have been lifted to a degree for us to become eligible. Are you seeing that also? Um, yes and no. Okay. I, I think, um, first of all, it, we have been the recipients of some funds from the Robin Hood Foundation, and they have been very generous. Mm -hmm. And what that has done is it has enabled us to provide tuition and books for students whose families were hit wow, by Sandy. And, and it, it, that's been just an enormous help. So in that way, yes, things, things are, are really um, pretty wonderful. I'm a little bit concerned about what's going to happen in the fall. We, a lot of federal aid is need-based, and it looks backwards. Okay. And I think we're going to see people whose economic lives in 2012 were absolutely disrupted and 2013 is not looking so great. Okay. So I think that we're going to see some struggles there because people, what's on that tax return isn't going to reflect the economic reality absolutely. for people. So I'm not sure, you know, the federal government has not been particular, they're not going to change their Pell guidelines Got for it. this. Yeah. But there may be other avenues where we can continue to help students. Okay. And again, I know the community will be behind you to help you do that. Well, our foundation, um, Brookdale Community, and in fact, our foundation um, gala was last night. Ah. And it, those folks work so hard and raise so much money for just these things. That was the first agency to step forward to say that they wanted to help was our foundation. Great. So what do you need? Great. That's really wonderful to hear. So 
the other piece that I want to talk to you about as far as the certification programs, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many of them and it's wonderful. And the one thing that we are zeroing in on here at SCAN is we have a TV show that's called Career Corner. And in the past, it highlighted different potential careers. But now we're really talking to the people 50 plus mm -hmm. in regards to getting um, career ready or re-ready, I should say, for second careers or third careers in some cases. And what it takes and how different the market is, especially in resume writing. I mean, you know, it's short and sweet sure. and it's online and it's probably 3,000 characters or less to tell your life story. And some of those skills are, are not don't come natural to some people mm -hmm. like myself. Sure. And so we're really looking at that, but also encouraging them to participate in a lot of your job fairs. Mm -hmm. And I know that you work with, again, some community organizations around that. So how are you, how, how what have you seen in regards to the job readiness piece? Oh, we do a lot of that in our non-credit division, um, outreach, business, and community development. And I think that there's a lot of people who are career changers and, and there's options out there. It, you've seen our catalog. It gets mailed to everybody. It, it certainly has something for everyone in there. Uh, one that I'd like to mention because I just, I, who knew that this was a career path, but we have a certificate in pet massage. At, at first I thought it was, are they teasing me really? But it turns out that a lot of boarding kennels and veterinarians offices are having people with these skills and it relaxes the animals in that kind of clinical environment. And as your pets get older, it's nice to have these techniques to make them more comfortable when their joints get, you know, a little tight and a little arthritic. So I had no idea that there was the demand for it, but there was the demand and we fill it. So that's when, when we see that there's a need for something, we get the program out there so that people can learn what they need to learn to do what they need to do. Yeah, and it's not surprising me that there's a demand. I mean, my daughter works for a veterinary hospital, and I, it's overwhelming, the business that they do, and uh, again, the illnesses that they handle and treat, and so, yes, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, it did surprise me, and, it, and, and then when I saw how robustly enrolled it was, I was delighted, but... Who knew? Who knew? Um, I, I can. I can. I, I think that's a wonderful example. So, going forward, what is your vision for Brookdale? Well, I think it's interesting you should say that because right now we're we're doing that. We're looking toward where we need to go in the future. Uh, I think that it's pretty clear that we're not going to see the restoration of funds that were lost. It, it's we're coming out of a recession. Tax dollars are tight. Um, the recipients of tax dollars are always a good 18 months behind Absolutely. you know, the, the rebound of the economy. So we won't see any new money for a while. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. We're also under a lot of pressure externally. There's a lot of accountability measures, uh, new accountability measures that are uh, you know, being put in place for higher education because people want to make sure those dollars are being spent well, and, and, and rightly so. So I think what we're looking at here is where, where do we need to be for Monmouth County in the future? We had a team of folks who worked with um, the Economic Development Agency in the county and did a demographic analysis of what's happening in Monmouth County so we could understand what people need. And we found some interesting trends. First of all, the population is moving westward. And our gr which makes sense to me because our greatest growth has been at Freehold. Really? And that's where the population is moving. The ethnicity is changing rapidly. We, we know that just from living in the community. And we see that the ages, of, uh, the numbers of high school students are dwindling. So we can't look at our traditional high school market. Right. As we did a little further dive, we looked at educational attainment in Monmouth County is generally pretty high, but we have an, a lot of adults who have not finished degrees. So we're looking at developing programs geared toward working adults who want to complete their degrees. So I think in the next year or so, you'll start to see some of those. Mm -hmm. There will be more things in the evening, weekend options, hybrid, online things that we haven't done heretofore. Um, we have a growing population of returning veterans. 
that's another group that we need to Huge serve. Issue. It is, it is, and we we need to staff appropriately for that. We do have a veterans coordinator. We do have people who can do the VA certifications, but veterans have a different set of needs, and they also come with um, training and education. And we need to look better at how to crosswalk that into our own programs so that they can get credit for their prior learning in the military. It's, but it, it's a really important market, and we Absolutely. need to serve them. And, and again, talking about the vets, I mean, really, I, I, I specialize in the field of aging, and um, it's always what's happening in the world is it, we're doing ADRC centers, so it's aging and disability centers. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter the age of the person, it has to do with what their needs are. And it's, we're now talking about no wrong door. So there's one phone number that someone can call and get the information that they need or get registered to get help. And so uh, it, it's just been an ongoing issue. And, and the VA has been approaching all of the local communities too and programs mm -hmm. about what can they do and, and better coordinating and communicating, which is wonderful. So it's great to hear that, that you guys are zeroing in on that and will be able to help. So that's really good. And then the last piece, I mean, we have a couple more minutes, is that SCAN and Brookdale have um, been partners for a long period of time. Isn't that great? It is great. Um, and again, I'm only here a year and a couple of months, but I do know the history of SCAN. And so I think that we've had a board representative mm -hmm. from Brookdale forever. Um, I know. would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone prior to... Um, to Webster Trammell, and, and then um, right now we have Nancy O'Shea, who's been wonderful in helping us with all of our surveys, our monkey online monkey surveys, so that we can understand who our population and what their needs are. And what we're hearing from our audience is that they want to be a lot more social together gatherings. Um, so we're, we're going to probably be doing a lunch and learn program where we will bring economic um, goods to the local restaurants in, in Monmouth County and maybe do a little educational piece, but have people get together, have a good time, break bread, and then learn something. So we're excited about that. You should be. What a spectacular idea. Yeah. Um, and because we're not traditional here as far as, you know, senior programs. And then the other stuff that I think that we're learning is that, I mean, you provide us some in-kind services and we couldn't do it without. So again, thank you. And um, you've been very supportive of our annual you know, luncheon. We don't do galas. We're not there yet. Maybe in the <laughs> Maybe near future. In the future. <laughs> but our, our annual luncheon, um, and this year um, we are gearing up for it, which will be a fabulous event because it's our 25th. So we'll make sure that you are at our table with, with a variety of your staff because they've just been very, very helpful. So any kind of closing remarks or things that you'd like to share with the viewers as far as um, Brookdale? who is a wonderful community partner. Well, thank you for saying that. And I, I think that I would like the viewers to remember that Brookdale is a community partner. It's, it's not just a place to send your son or daughter to, to take courses before transferring to Rutgers or some other place, that we are here for the community. All of our programs are in response to the community. And we're just happy to serve. Well, again, thank you very much. Um, and we will be right back. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? 1 in 195 million. The odds of the child being diagnosed with autism? 1 in 88. I'm Jamie McMurray and my niece has autism. Learn more at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back. My name is Pat Bowes, and I have the pleasure of introducing Andrea Tarr, the program director for SCAN. She's been with us for many years and has brought to SCAN a variety of different skills and talents, and um, she is helping move SCAN to the, in a new direction. So welcome. Thanks, Pat. So I know that we have lots of things <laughs> on the agenda for mm -hmm. the next couple of months. Uh, I'm really excited that this has been our 25th anniversary. 
year we have been celebrating it seems like All a year. lifetime yeah. um, but there's certain programs that we would like for our audience to know about that are coming up so yeah. why don't you share that with us well why don't I start with the campus of courses because that will be from September 16th to October 11th and of course that's always publicized in the Asbury Park Press but of course you can always call the office here and we'll give you more info and where are those held is the Boscov's department store on the third floor in that fabulous community room. It's, gr it's a great location and we love doing the classes. Last time we did them in January, we had about over 600 people coming through the door and I'm hoping that this year we'll have way more than that. And we usually do 40 classes in four weeks. Yeah, wow. My favorite. About 40 classes, that's right. Uh, yeah. And the great thing is though they're like one and done. You know, and we, ha we have everything from, uh, you know, we have medical things from Mammoth Medical, but we have a lot of fun things, digital photography, eBay, a lot of informative things, a lot of fun things, definitely something for everyone. Great. And what else is happening? Oh, yeah, there's always more. And, of course, our fall semester begins uh, September 16th, and that's 13 weeks, and that runs through December 13th. So that'll be coming up as well. And, of course, we've made a lot of changes in our, the biggest, I th I'm going to say the biggest change we've made is in our um, computer department because we used to do our program 13 weeks. And a lot of people, I won't say they complained, but we did have some feedback. <laughs> And we responded. And how we responded was we basically took everything that was covered in the 13 weeks and we broke it down into maybe eight or, eight or ten modules. And we're offering them on a rotating basis throughout the 13 weeks. So it's like a one and done. And you can take one module, ten modules, whatever you want, and the price is so reasonable, you can take them over and over. I, I think when you say very reasonable, that's an understatement in some that cases. That is an understatement. Um, our semesters are 13 weeks. Yeah. And the other is that I think the average price of a class ranges from anywhere from 3 to $5. And um, that's right. it's just really very cost effective. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we're making it easier because people can choose what they want to do versus signing up for a long period of time. And obviously, um, you know, the results are that our attendance has really soared yeah. in the computer classes. So I can see that peop this is the way, the direction that people want. Not everyone wants to make that 13-week commitment. And we're, we're going to be having some more show um, classes on travel ventures. Yes. So that's exciting. And also we have a new program that we have been funded for through the Monmouth County Office on right. Aging called Take Control of Your Health. Yes. So just share with us mm -hmm. how we're going to roll that out in the fall. Well, we've started it already. You know, we had several of our uh, staff here became certified as a peer leader mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, facilitate the, uh, the program. And it's a six-week program. It is complimentary because we did get funding. And it's a, it's a very interactive kind of a program for people. We're, we're trying to target people 60 plus, but it is anyone could take the program and it's really all about you know self-management for people who might have a chronic disease and that could be high blood pressure high cholesterol maybe you're recovering from a stroke or cancer really anything and also it's open for caregivers because they have special needs Absolutely. as well so we're covering a lot of different topics we do a lot of brainstorming very interactive you know how to, how to get a better night's sleep how to deal with your medication uh, how to speak be a better advocate when you go to your doctor's office the importance of physical activity and nutrition this is all covered and it, it's been you know it, the feedback has been really good because it, it because it's interactive you're you're you you know, you're not hearing from a doctor. It's very different when you're hearing, when you're getting this uh, feedback from your peers. And we're taking it on the road, so to yes, speak. Yes, we are definitely taking it on the road. In the fall, we're going to be doing one at Regal Point in Middletown. And we're going to be doing one at the, uh, if not two, at Titton Falls Senior Center. And then there's the... Um, Neptune. Neptune City, what is it, the Community Center. Yes. And there'll probably be even more than that as well. All of this information, as far as dates, is available on our website and our new improved website. And I also want to say that when you, when you do take the class, you do get a reference book that goes with it. And the reference book is called uh, Living a Healthy Life with Chronic Conditions. It's an excellent sort of a, a companion piece to the class. And you're also going to get a relaxation CD, which is really if you, you know, complete the class. Done. If you complete the class. And I'm going to cordially invite them to our luncheon as our guest. Yes.
So there's a nice little incentive there. Yeah, so I'm excited about the program, and mm -hmm. uh, the response has been wonderful, so yeah, I'm really I think pleased. Yeah, I think it's going really well. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that we have gotten some money from the Robin Hood Foundation, as you know, yes. and we will be providing some workshops in the community versus people coming to SCAN, right. both in Monmouth and Ocean County. And we're looking at developing workshops around resiliency, especially after some of the um, situations that mm -hmm. a lot of our members and the community yeah and at large have gone through. So I hope that our audience keeps an eye out for us marketing those particular <coughs> classes. So it'll be issues around resiliency, but also complementing with yoga and meditation. Right. So people can take Stress better, reduction. Stress better yeah. care of themselves. Exactly. And I'm excited about that. So mm -hmm. we will have a lot more information on that. The other program I, I want to talk about is that we have decided to adopt um, some homebound seniors yes. in Monmouth County. Um, so it's seniors helping seniors. Very good. We have been able to get these cute banks <laughs> from investors, and we're asking people to fill them with their loose change, right. bring them back, and for every $250 where we raise, we can adopt a senior mm -hmm. and make sure that they have breakfast for a whole year. So I'm really committed to seeing if we can do a whole bunch of them yes. and get a lot more involved in the community because uh, we're really fortunate uh, and people who come here to um, be able to take care of themselves and the homebound seniors who have a special pot spot in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I really would love to continue to do this program. The board has bought in on this concept and we will be doing this all the way up to September 28th when we will be having our second annual wall walk in celebration of grandparents. That's right. So we're excited about this program. So I hope that people call us and ask us more information and come pick up a bank and uh, bring it back when, the, when it's mm -hmm. filled. And the staff is participating as well. The SCAN staff has uh, committed to two piggy banks. So. Okay. And mm -hmm. then the other piece is that we have our annual luncheon coming up yes. on October 15th. That's right. It's our 25th anniversary. Yep. And we'll have lots of goodies and surprises. It'll be held at Seabrook. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really excited that I have to be an active part in this one this year. 25 and years. And we will be uh, rolling out some new exciting things as the year goes on. And I personally want to thank you for all that you've done for SCAN throughout you, the Pat. years. Because you have stepped up to the plate. So I would like to take this time and thank our audience and hope that you tune in in the near future. How to Locate Scan Scan is easy to locate once you find the movie theater at Mammoth Mall. As you enter the parking lot from Route 35, the theater is almost directly ahead of you. Drive towards the theater, but go up along the left side into the parking lot. As you approach the end, you will see entrance number three on your right. Park and enter the building here. Once inside, you will see a staircase that only goes down. After passing through the doors at the bottom, turn to your left and scan is right there.